This is Revell's re-release of their 1970 Snaptide kit, which was made only two years after the real car was sold to the public. Opel first introduced it in 1965 at, a, at uh, car shows in Frankfurt and Paris, and the car was designed by the aptly named Erhard Schnell, which is German for fast. Apparently he was born to either build fast cars or become a 100 meter dash runner at the Olympics. The car would go from 0 to 96 km per hour uh, in 10.8 seconds and had a top speed of 182 km per hour. Between 68 and 73, uh, the Opel GT was sold in excess of 100,000 units and it seems to have been very popular. The fact that Revell made a kit only two years after its release testifies to that. There are still to this day companies which specialize in making replacement parts for the real car. Now getting to the Revell kit, it is cheap going for 7.65 euros at the lowest on eBay and with an average of about 10 euros it seems. The box contains an orange and a medium grey uh, colored sprue as you can uh, see here at the uh, back of the box which also has uh, good pictures for clarity and ease of um, and actually it helps you with the build process that you can refer to these detailed pictures and which are clear uh, and not only the manual. This is um, this is very good. I know a lot of companies do pictures like this, and I think uh, all of them should should do that. It also, of course, helps uh, inspire you uh, as you um, as you work through uh, the product. Uh, as you can see, images of the actual model rather than the usually quite quite uh, beautiful uh, illustrations. I think it certainly has. Uh, very nice uh, detailing lighting and whatever so the box itself is actually pretty cool but uh, what matters is uh, the, uh, the contents of the box and not the, uh, the flashy exterior going to the car body first as I open the bag <clears throat> we can see the uh, careless and as cheap as possible packaging has meant uh, scratches on uh, both the, uh, the hood it has a, a lot of these uh, scratch marks on the hood of the car, which definitely do not belong there. And also on the, uh, on the roof. To a much lesser extent uh, on the, the sides. And also uh, on the other side. The scratches are the results of uh, keeping it all in one bag rather than uh, as they will all be rustling around together rather than being separated in individual bags, foam or something more environmentally friendly. I'm not an expert modeler, uh, nor am I very experienced and I think maybe an extra fine file uh, such as this FlexiFile FlexPad or really fine sandpaper could still save the day. But here's my point as in the uh, Kenworth Aerodyne uh, kit review. Rebel markets these as uh, uncomplicated and easy uh, to glue um, <clears throat> and paint as according to their uh, skill level. My impression is that the, Rebel, that the Rebel skill level is to a large extent still based on uh, part count. But that does not really say anything uh, about how difficult it is to build a particular scale model. What matters, I think, is how hard it is to fit the parts uh, if they are very small and the quality of uh, polish, including filing, which you as the modeler have to do. But I think a good example of this comes on the next orange brew actually, which I'll go to just for a, for a tiny deviation, uh, which is uh, containing the orange interiors you see here. Now, hopefully you will be able to see uh, the uh, very large circles on the camera. I believe they're called injector pin marks, uh, six, uh, all six of them, which you see here and here down below here and also in the bottom of the uh, of the car interior. <clears throat> they are very visible when you just hold the part in your hand. Unfortunately, there's not, there's not going to be much to prevent you from seeing this once the model is completed. 
I'll just put this over and there's there's nothing in the back uh, there's going to be seats here obviously but it's still going to be visible clearly visible when the model is finished unless you do something about it um, you really need to come up with an answer for that such as adding maybe your own little piece of fabric on top to make it look really cool actually uh, now let's look at the back of the same part this is not going to be visible so couldn't the plastic injection have taken place from that side it may have meant the uh, texture fabric in the interior bottom of the part would not have been possible with the machines Revel have used, but it's pretty much ruined anyway by those, by those large six smiley faces. This kit is cheap, so you can't expect much in terms of quality. Just know that the real price is the time you have to spend filing and polishing. So back to the car body. Um, <clears throat> I do think there are a lot of good things to say about this too. Uh, the, the form definitely looks the part of a real uh, Opel GT and Revell has prioritized making nice sharp details on this part. Uh, look at the logo just in front of the doors for instance. Now the logo at the front of the hood. It's a placement holder for decals but I still, I still think they look pretty nice. Uh, you can also see the front lights on the hood, these two uh, large oval egg-shaped things. Um, there are no hood lights provided with this kit, so they're either going to be closed or you have to be able to scratch build something uh, which resembles, resembles this. Uh, in the real car, as I understand it, these uh, front lights were actually uh, operated by the, the driver pulling uh, a large stick, something like that, inside the car and uh, that would make them uh, go up like this and, and uh, I think it was it was said that you could always uh, spot an Opel GT owner by his uh, oversized uh, right arm. <clears throat> now something that's definitely going to be tricky for me as a beginner is removing the two mold lines going along the sides of the car which you, uh, which you should be able to see here this mold line which goes up on top of uh, the by the window also and at the front you can see here all the way down to the to the front now some of this is going to be the shape of the car but it does contain um, contain a mold line all the way through that which you have to uh, to somehow get rid of. You have to file it away. Now the thing with this is that it's going to be hard to do it here by the frame without actually removing the frame also and you're going to lose detail because of the placement of the mold line. And that means you have to have actually a higher skill level than just being able to uh, file and polish a little bit and then putting the things together. You have to actually have some sort of uh, some sort of skill. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, I know how to do it. Uh, but to uh, in order to to ha have this look just right. Now I'm not too concerned about uh, this because uh, the in places such as as this uh, here uh, around the window frames, uh, filing from the inside is going to be easy. You just cut uh, cut this part away and file. So that's not uh, a bother or a concern at all. The wipers look basic. But they're, but they're there. Can't expect much more for this price. If you take a look underneath, you can see the old uh, snap tight hooks. <clears throat> the body is on the whole uh, well made, I think. And uh, I do think it's going to look awesome on the finished model. Tire rings are not used in uh, this kit, which can uh, be seen in the addendum to the manual. The seats, now they look uh, clean and crisp. The seat texture is a bit modeled and looks like the interior part of the car. This is not good as I believe it's supposed to be leather interior, but if you paint a black eye, I suppose it's going to be hard to see. The instrument panel also uh, has a lot of flash, but not in the interior frame, which would have been a disaster. There's no clear part to put in front uh, of the decal speed dial, and there are a lot of impurities. Not a good part, I'm afraid. The chassis has the same modeled print on the outside bottom as the interior of the car had, um, which is weird. Otherwise, this part is probably the cleanest, crispiest one and looks cool. No flash to speak of, but a little bit of, of scratching.
Nothing serious though. Finally on the orange brew we have the uh, the two axles which have uh, mold lines uh, and appear undefined. However the print quality of the axles doesn't really matter as they won't be visible once you fit the tires. Uh, the vinyl tires look fine. Um, it has a uh, Goodyear print on the outside. Uh, I'm happy that they're not made of plastic, which would usually mean having to remove a mold line, which would in turn damage the tire pattern. Uh, the fourth one here uh, is a misprint, with the lettering hardly defined at all. Coming to the grey sprue, um, <clears throat> uh, first uh, the hook caps uh, look mostly okay, however there is a print flaw uh, in the third one, and um, which will hopefully be visible, be invisible by the black paint, as it's otherwise going to be difficult to file off because it's uh, located on the uh, on the inside here. The fender looks like this uh, on the finished car is the uh, is the best part on the sprue, having almost no flash. Even though it is the best looking, uh, it still has a very glaring issue right at the front, uh, in which we uh, we can see a, a huge blob. Uh, now you might think it's going to get covered by the license plate, but there's only decals for that, and no actual uh, <coughs> flat piece of plastic to put the the decal on. Uh, <laughs> what I recommend is buying a sheet of typically white plastic and cut out a rectangular license plate shape. This will create realism and will cover up that ridiculous blob. The uh, steering wheel has minor flash and will require cleanup with a round file, but nothing that can't be fixed. The rear fender parts need to be need to be cleaned up, but it's not going to be much of a problem. I think I think it, that's going to be quite easy. Now the clear part is the uh, the only one in its own bag. It has no scratches. The clear part is uh, really clear, like water in a glass. Uh, no haze to be seen at all. There's an imperfection in the front window, uh, which is uh, a detriment. If you hold it into the light. You can also see um, a lot of impurities in the side windows. However, the back one is, is uh, very close to, uh, to perfect. And um, uh, this is very far from good, but it's okay. The impurities are not that visible at a passing glance on a railroad diorama, so if that's going to be your use for it, it's certainly going to be mine, then you should be okay. If you're looking for top-notch finish, you probably would, ha wouldn't have gone for this model in the first place. The decals look sharp, clean and uh, detailed. <clears throat> you get license plates for eight different uh, European countries in this, including uh, Germany and Great Britain, as well as Switzerland and France. That should cover about uh, most of the gauge one railroad layouts out there, uh, but of course it's not going to help if I want Danish plates on it, uh, or American for that matter. For that, I could, for instance, ask Andreas Nothaft uh, of Modellbahn Decals for help. He does custom decals and he does do them very well. I've used him for a few years. I really like that they included Opel logos uh, for for the hoop caps, which you see uh, up here in the in the corner. I think that's a nice, I think that's a nice detail. It also comes out uh, very well on the on the box here. I'm very much looking forward to seeing that um, in the, in the real on the physical model. <coughs> Now um, the decals are, are not uh, are not uh, shiny. Uh, I think rather they have a satin finish, which I think is good, and they're of about uh, average uh, thickness. I hope they don't break too easily. Uh, the manual looks great, a beautiful front, but it's the inside that counts. So my parents were good enough to teach me. Now the build steps themselves are are clear. Then again, in this sense, this is truly a beginner's kit. I think uh, you could put this together without the use of the manual. It's really cool they use the color coding in the build description itself, by, uh, however, as this makes it even easier to figure out what's next and how the final finished model is uh, going to look. Uh, that is actually top notch and, uh, and praiseworthy. in here to see how the decals are supposed to, to go in place. Beautiful car, it's a very very beautiful car. I think I'm really gonna love this once it's finished. My concluding remark would be that you should know what you're getting yourself into with these cheap new Revel kits. They were made in Poland, so the box says, so at least it's plausible that the factory workers received a living wage. But the monetary cheapness has definitely meant that you would be paying with your time instead, filing, polishing, 
and scratch building the license plate. I don't think this is a beginner's kit uh, as such. It requires a little bit of, uh, of experience, uh, but then again, maybe this is a good kit to, uh, to learn and to, to actually get uh, that experience. Uh, it's not very expensive, so it's easy to, uh, to, um, to make mistakes and, and be able to, to live with it, certainly. Thank you very much for watching this far, and I hope to see you again. If you have any constructive feedback to offer, be it positive or negative, suggestions for new things or specific kits, please leave a comment. I would appreciate that. Bye-bye.